thought I'd start off by telling you how I got onto this person. Her name is Vida Goldstein, Vida Jane Mary Goldstein, and her dates are 1869 to 1949. So she had a reasonably long life. She was 80. And I'd never heard of her. I had never heard of this person until um, when I was at university. I had a friend who did her honours history thesis on Australia's suffragettes. And I thought, oh, I didn't know we had any, because you always think of the suffragettes, you know, the Pankhursts and, you know, smashing windows and all that sort of stuff for votes for women. But in fact, we did, but they didn't get such a great rap because they weren't violent. They didn't need to jump up and down. Women in Australia got the vote in 1903 as partly as a result of federation, it's, it's often assumed that, we, that women got the vote here, making us the second nation in the world, by the way, after New Zealand, because, uh, because of federation. That's kind of true. But the various states, which were colonies, of course, before, 19, before federation, before 1900, 1901, what happened was that they gave their women citizens the vote in state elections mainly because they needed enough people to be able to vote for things. And it sort of turned out that some women had the vote at Federation and some didn't. So it was kind of logical to extend the franchise to women, although there was such a fuss, but in fact they, they did. So they gave the vote. The women were given the vote in 1903, as I said, um, and they were all women except Indigenous women and people of unsound mind or people in prison, women in prison. Now, the fascinating thing about this is that if you look at the Act, it says um, all citizens of Australia, each, each citizen shall have a vote. And a citizen was called he. So... It was really, it's really interesting. So, in fact, women got the vote in Australia because of a convention of English grammar. <laughs> it's true because, you know, he subsumes she or she is subsumed into he. So, that's how women got the vote. So, it was huge. It was absolutely enormous getting the vote because, um, as I say, we were the second country to do so. Um, countries like well, I don't know, U US and the UK for a start, Chile, Switzerland, who didn't get to vote for ages, France, ditto, and the, all the countries that didn't give their women the vote looked to Australia as an extremely progressive young country with, you know, fresh-faced and all terrific. However, I thought this was all good and I thought, yeah, fantastic. But the first woman didn't get into Parliament until 1943. So it took 40 years for women who had the vote to get into Parliament. Now, this is quite interesting because Vida Goldstein, as I said, um, put her hand up to become the first woman who'd actually... Um, she was the first woman to put her hand up to, to vote, to, um, to become um, an MP in the Senate. And she wasn't the only one that election, in, in that election, but... She didn't get in, and she tried four more times and didn't get in. And the reasons that she didn't get in, I think, are worth exploring, and that's partly what I've done in the book. But um, the other thing, of course, is that US and the UK didn't give their women the vote until about 1920, 1919, 1920. But they had women in Congress and in the Houses of Parliament within five years. So something is going, something was going on. <laughs> um, so anyway, look, let me tell you about Vida and the credential she had to be um, a member of parliament and, as I say, what her story is. Um, she was born in Portland in Victoria, as I say, in um, 1869. She, had, she, was, she was the eldest of five children of Jacob Goldstein, who was Irish from a Jewish background, as his name would imply, but very, very Irish, and Isabella Hawkins, who was the daughter of a very wealthy squatter. A um, couple of interesting things there. Isabella 
decided that she did not want to marry into the squatocracy, so she married the local town's shopkeeper, who was Jacob, who was about 10 years older. Jacob must have had something because um, they, he was completely out of the world that she knew, which of course is, or is often a great attraction you know, when one is young. And the other thing about him is that he had extremely progressive ideas, and so did she. They brought up four children, uh, five children, four boys and a girl, uh, four, four girls and a boy, and um, they uh, they moved to Warrnambool and then they moved to Melbourne. And Jacob got a job in the public service in Melbourne in about eighteen, oh, about eighteen eighty, I think. Um, Vida was educated, the eldest was educated at home, and she went to the Presbyterian Ladies College in Melbourne, which was most, probably the most progressive school in Australia at the time. It was um, one of the few where women were treated um, as seriously as men um, in terms of learning. They really wanted to, wanted women, the, the headmaster bloke, wanted women to um, be, had, take their place intellectually with men. So that was, that was pretty amazing considering that most women, most girls at that stage were educated at home or in sort of fairly amateur schools, you know. Um, so that was, that was pretty progressive. Um, Vida could have gone to university, but she decided to help her mother, um, who was very into charitable causes and helping women and children, especially poor women and children. They set up the first creche in Australia, in Collingwood, in, that's her mother did, and Vida helped with that, because these were factory workers who couldn't, you know, who couldn't leave their kids, but they had to work because they'd go broke. This is during the depression of the 1890s, and um, she um, that, she worked with women and and children in in their houses, and oh, she had some horrible stories about people going to sleep at night and rats running over their faces and sewage leaking through. It was just horrible. You know, the conditions, cholera was, was rife and, and it was, was just awful. Um, but um, both women, Vida and her mother, were both on the committee of the Queen Victoria Hospital. Now, the Queen Victoria Hospital was amazing. It was the only, the first hospital in Australia set up by women for women. And it was pretty amazing because women had only just been able to graduate as doctors. And honestly, some of the stuff that you read about this makes you very angry because there were women who topped the year in medicine and they couldn't get a residency at Royal Melbourne Hospital because they were women, basically. Um, it's all right for women to be nurses, but, you know, it's the whole thing about doctors having authority. Women were not permitted to have authority. So, um, anyway, she became, Vida became a huge supporter of the cause of women's suffrage. This is before, before um, Federation. And when the vote was given, it was, was given to women, and it was given. Uh, you don't, it, it's quite interesting. I didn't realise what a huge deal it was that men who had run everything since the beginning of time, were being asked to let women in. 